All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, as you just heard, we are recording this session. So if that makes anybody uncomfortable, now would be the time to uh, maybe exit. But we're gonna re record this video so that we can share it with others and you can also share that with other cohorts in your company. I'm Zach Eichenberger, the Director of Product and Services for Control Product Systems Group. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna be discussing CPSGU online training. Uh, the agenda is in front of you. We'll give you a little overview of the program, why we created it, what courses are available, uh, a sneak peek into the admin portal. And uh, due to some great feedback by over, you know, we have well over 100 people in the program now, uh, we've made some good improvements and we plan to make more uh, going forward. So we've just got 30 minutes today. I tend to ramble on. So uh, I'm going to get right into it, but if you don't mind, just to maintain audio quality, utilize that chat feature. I'll be monitoring that throughout the session. We'll make sure to get those questions answered for you uh, by the end of that 30 minutes. I'm happy to stay on a little bit longer as well. So maybe just to kick this off uh, and get the juices flowing, I'll show you a quick little sizzle video uh, that'll kind of get you oriented on the program if you're not already involved in it. of some of the types of gates and operators that we'll be discussing in this module. First slide, please. Can we work on an automated gate that doesn't meet the current F2200 standard? And the answer is very simple. Now yes. we're gonna talk about the proper way to strip wire. There are and roll to get us rock going this morning. So as you can see, the, the training portal is meant to be interactive um, and focused on adult learning. So um, there's several modules in there. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, the education and the, the training has been designed by a few people. We've outsourced some instructional designers to help us with the content. Um, myself, Nick Reich, uh, Tim Nordstrom, all of us uh, probably did the bulk of the uh, content for the training. And we all train at the AFA school, which is a fantastic school, and uh, train our teams internally with a fair amount of experience. So I think you'll see that the training follows industry best practices, is set by a lot of the certification programs in our industry, uh, and based on some industry experience that we've tapped into uh, throughout our company as well. So why did we create this? And, and the main reason we created this program is because you told us to. We've gone through several segmentation and survey processes to understand what our clients want to see from us. And it seems that all roads led back to training. We don't have a good breeding ground for training. There isn't any real long-term schools out there uh, to bring people up. Once I bring them in, I have a hard time training them here. Uh, it's laborious and challenging, and there's not a lot of content available. So several aspects of that or several reasons uh, about that are the reasons that we built this uh, for our clients. And at the end of the day, you know, when our clients win, we win. That's why we made the investment. And we did some math on this. And, you know, based on the number of techs in the field for our loyal clients, it's there's a reasonable payback for this. We've invested a lot. We've uh, had a dedicated person to this uh, for a full year uh, prior to launching. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we've utilized some outside services to uh, support the program. So I think you'll find as you jump into the program that it's pretty rich. Uh, it gives owners and managers 
the ability to train based on best practices. It gives owners and managers the ability to track the progress of their employees. And maybe even more importantly, it gives them an opportunity to ensure that their installers and technicians do know what the best practices are. I was an installer for about five years, a long time ago, back in the 90s. And I can tell you, it was I was in the field two years before I understood what normally open and common meant, right? I didn't know why I was landing those wires where I was landing them. I was just landing them because uh, that's what my boss told me to do. When I entered into distribution, uh, my sixth year in the industry, I learned obviously more um, about this industry, gate operator installation specific loops. Loops were one of those ones that I was installing wrong for five years <laughs> and, and our company was probably installing wrong for much, much longer. So even if you are a seasoned pro uh, or journeyman gate operator installer, there's probably some good content in here for you. There's some nuggets in here for you. Uh, the other group that this is uh, beneficial to is salespeople. You know, salespeople, if you go through this program and understand all the best practices of installation and common considerations about choosing products, which we address uh, in several of the modules, you're going to have a better idea how to bid those jobs. So at first glance, you're going to think, hey, this is just for brand new people. It's great for brand new people. In fact, several companies I've talked to are just going to make this standard practice for any new employee uh, for gate operator installation or technicians. Um, but it's also great for those that have been in the field for a while um, so they can benchmark their installation best practices against what the industry is saying. And hey, we don't argue with success. If you're being successful installing the way you are, by all, by all means, keep doing that. Uh, but it's good to understand kind of where the industry sits as well. And again, salespeople, uh, so they understand all the aspects of gate operator installation and uh, there's a little bit of troubleshooting in there as well. One uh, component that we we stress in here as well is, is gate safety. So there's uh, probably two and a half hours uh, in the gate operator curriculum, and I'll show that to you here shortly, just dedicated to gate safety. So something that will help you limit your liabilities and um, make sure you're installing um, safe gate operator systems. So you know, more on the rationale about why we built this. How has training been accomplished historically? Historically, you hire a new person, you throw them in a truck with somebody a little bit more experienced, and you watch and you learn. I mean, that's how I learned the industry. And it is effective, It, but it's a slow process. So this is meant to uh, speed that process up so you can have get an employee out there that's, that's making you money a little bit quicker, right? Another uh, way to do it is to pull your best installer, your best technician out of the field for periods of time to train others in your company. And that's a great way to do it as well, but that pulls your best person out of the field, which means they're not making you money either. These are also the people that get the most amount of phone calls in a company, right? There are other technicians, installers are calling them for advice. That's taking them away from the job at hand. Uh, and slowing things down. Local seminars are great again, uh, but most of those local seminars are kind of product-based, more sales-based and not so technical in nature. We really try to make this technical. Um, and, and probably one of the best way to train if you have the ability to is to send them to a school. Well, there's really just one school. Um, AFA does an awesome job. I highly recommend if you can send people to the AFA training that you do so. Nothing replaces you know, focused training, hands-on training in a, a scene like that for a full week on industry best practices. That's awesome, but it's expensive. Um, they're away from home. Sometimes uh, your teammates can't travel. And, um, and again, this isn't going to replace that necessarily, It'll replace all of these things, but it's going to give these folks a good foundation. Okay, so that's a little bit of the rationale about why we built it and uh, some of the economic factors that we understand you, you all are facing out there. 
So again, it's an online portal. Everything here is self-paced. So as you enroll students, they will be able to take these courses um, at will. Um, we've got varying strategies that we're hearing about. Uh, we're, some companies are letting their technicians do this on their own time and maybe offering you know, promotions or small raises when they complete it. Uh, some are taking a certain amount of time out during the week and, and having them go through the program. Uh, but the beauty is once they go through these programs, especially the curriculum is we're going to really focus on here today is they can also go back to it later and refresh their memory on the best practices. And especially if they're new to the industry, let's say you learn all about loop installation, you're not going to remember everything, right? You can't absorb everything. So as you go out there, get a little bit more experience, um, maybe there was something in that training that uh, you remember, you can't quite recall that you're doing a little bit differently. You can go back, take that uh, particular course and uh, refresh your memory, sharpen your skills in that regard. As you saw in the sizzle video, it's interactive. Uh, we understand adult learning is not sitting down, watching a video for an hour and then taking a test. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's one way to do it. If you're really sharp and you're paying attention, that, that might be fine, but you're probably not Go, you're probably going to need to click through something every five, six, seven minutes in this uh, training. And uh, one of the aspects we try to lean into is terminology. That's a, a big piece of it, right? What are all these weird terms that we use in this industry? Um, and if they understand the terminology at a minimum, at least they can communicate clearly with their cohorts, you know, their bosses or tech support when they call us or a manufacturer, they'll have that kind of terminology or be exposed to that terminology. Again, we hit the core disciplines of gate operator installation and we're adding more modules. For the managers, the owners, you're, we're testing to an 80% or better score. So as they go through these programs, you will know that they under, they, they have a pretty good understanding, uh, at least at the time of the content created. They can't just, it's not a layup. They can't mail it in. All right. It's trackable. You'll be able to see their test scores. You'll be able to see their progress. You'll be able to see how much time they spent in those modules. We also have a big section of general product training videos. They're more probably salesy uh, feature and benefit type of uh, sessions, mostly past webinars that we've created. All of those are great for just continuing education. We've also been deputized by the IDEA, um, ACI um, to offer up those as CEUs to continue your certifications going forward. I think it's nine or uh, nine or 11 hours every few years that you've got to post. So you'll get a certificate of completion and you can submit that with your re-up on your certifications. Um, and again, it's a, it's a long-term resource. You'll be able to go back to this over time and refresh your memory. We're adding content all the time. I haven't done a great job of communicating that to you all, but the, for those that are already in the program, we are adding content regularly um, and we want to improve it. In fact, I'm super excited. We're going to hire a full-time learning and development professional here in the next uh, 30 days. And they will be dedicated to this program as well as a few others in our organization. Uh, but this is this will be somebody that's um, spent their career training adults and creating online training content or interactive training content. So once you're in the program um, and you want to review uh, the courses available, I want to kind of point some things out. And what I'm seeing is. A lot of customers are going in and they're taking certain courses, but it really those courses that they're taking weren't really the intent of this program. They're not the most valuable aspects of the program. And so I want to point those out. And by the way, those are that's our fault for not probably communicating these properly. They're broken right down right now into three categories, gate operator technical training. Then we've got the general training product videos. And uh, telephone entry systems, we've got a really nice module in there. We're looking to grow that. So the gate operator technical training is manufacturer agnostic. It's not specific to any manufacturer. It's following industry best practices. Um, and, th and that's good because 
if you're a mechanic that can work on a Ford, you're probably a mechanic that can work on a Chevy. That's kind of the concept there. Uh, and then we'll layer on the product specific training in that center section. Again, that center section is general product training. We're going to um, load up more. You know, manufacturers are doing a pretty good job now of creating video training, and we want to capture as much of that in here as possible. So we'll continue to load those up. Great for CEUs, great for continuing education. And then we've got the telephone entry and smart video intercom technical training. Again, manufacturer agnostic, okay? And if there's one category in our industry that's a little bit more mystical, it's, it's telephone entry and smart video intercom, mainly because we've entered that age of information and um, internet of things, if you will. So we're dealing with more connected devices. There's one module in there. We've got two more modules planned to go in uh, to this section. And as life goes on, you'll expect to see um, deep training on RFID, commercial door operators, residential door operators, and some other aspects of the industry uh, to support those training needs. Okay. All right. All right. So I want to dive deep in the, the bulk of our time has been spent tr in training curriculums for gate operator technical training. Okay. If you click down on that, you'll see two more sections. You've got curriculum, which is really your uh, best value. That's going to get you all of the individual training courses in a curriculum, in a flow that we think is best to learn. Um, that that curriculum's $500 plus some tax uh, per learner. And there is a $50 per year subscription fee. You can go in and buy individual courses. Most of them are most of the uh, courses that are in the curriculum are also available individual, um, but it's, it's less of a resource at that point. Once they've got the full curriculum available to them, they've got all the core disciplines of gate operator installation at their fingertips. What are those um, types of gates of types of gates and operators? Uh, we just go through, again, to orient, especially folks that are new to the industry, all the different types of gate operators, types of gates, common considerations around those, uh, all the different components of a gate operator. Uh, so we really work hard to get them oriented on, on um, the anatomy of an operator. And it probably, if that was the only module you took, you'd be like, eh, this is kind of salesy, not so techy. Well, that's just to get the baseline. And then we go into ASTM, gate safety, cons uh, gate construction safety standards, right? Electricity and solar. I'm super stoked on this section. You know, we talk about circuits and uh, general uh, electricity, uh, basics of electricity, how to use a voltmeter, resistance, continuity, things that those tools that they're going to need out in the field to not just install, but to do technical support. And a really nice section on solar power gate operators there as well. UL325, again, gate operator safety standards, all those uh, safety devices that we need to, to keep people safe. We hit pedestrian gates and hardware. Standalone access controls is fairly light, mostly just common considerations about access controls, basic access controls, and how they interact with the, the machine. Vehicle detection is deep. We go heavy into loops, but we also go into alternatives to loops as well. You know, laser-based time-of-flight products, uh, Doppler radio, radar type products, microwave and whatnot. Uh, so we give you uh, some insight into uh, options, not just loops, probes, things of that nature. Battery backup, emergency access, so you can stay compliant for emergency access in your region. And an introduction to troubleshooting, kind of some, um, you know, basics of troubleshooting. How do you go out there, get all the vital signs at a minimum, if you walk out understanding all that content, you will be very well uh, prepped to understand what's going on at that site so that if you do need to call us for support or a manufacturer for uh, support, you'll have taken all those vital signs. You'll kind of understand what's going on out there uh, and be able to speak a little bit more intelligently um, about that installation. Okay. So that's the gate operator curriculum. That's the marquee uh, training program in uh, CPSGU online. Some improvements based on feedback uh, from our customers that are in the program. And actually, 
uh, I, I ran this by some learning and development professionals as well, is that in adult learning, if we miss a question, we want to know immediately what we got wrong. And it might feel like, well, now you're giving them the answer and you kind of are. But at the end of the day, I don't really care that you're a good student, right? We don't care that you're, we want to know that you understand the content. We want you to understand um, those core disciplines. And if you can see what you got wrong, at least at that point, you can go back and learn a little bit more, go back into that training program and uh, dive a little bit deeper into that particular aspect. This is just one example of whatnot. So we'll tell you what you got wrong right away. Uh, in, mo in the tests, you'll have three opportunities to take the test. So if you fail the first time, uh, it's okay. You can retake it and, and you can retake it a third time as well. Um, if after the third, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pause you and uh, you're going to have to kind of retake that whole module. Okay. Other improvements is on the gate operator curriculum, we were forcing you to go through each module in order. We do feel that's the best way to learn, but um, it was brought to our attention. Hey, look, I've got a little bit more of a journeyman person here. Um, they're really good with, you know, gates and, and operators. They understand ASTM, uh, but they need a little bit of help on electricity. So let's make it so we can jump between modules if need be. So we made that update uh, based on that feedback. We also made improvements to the admin dashboard. Again, this was a, 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 some feedback from you guys. So in the admin, only the admins will have access to this. Each company has an admin for their company, or you can have multiple admins, but they'll have purview over your learners. And in this uh, activity report, they'll be able to go in and see all of the people uh, underneath them what they're enrolled in, what, uh, if they've, how many courses they've started, how many they've completed, and how much time spent uh, in that module. So just a good dashboard to kind of level set where they're at in the program and to make sure that they're leveraging your investment. To go on further, uh, the request was, hey, look, I, I, I want to see what uh, questions they got wrong. Right. I want to understand what I need to train them on more. And so we can now go in and uh, show you what their test scores are. So if you go into the learner activity report, you're going to uh, view enrollments. You'll see all the certificates of completion for the courses they've taken. You'll see status. You'll see their general test score. Um, on that module and, and kind of how much time they've spent in that module and then what modules they're still working on or not started yet. To take it a step further, if you really wanna know, like I need to know what questions they got wrong, we can go a little bit further, okay? There's a section in here called reports. Again, this is for the admins. You will click on reports on the left-hand side here, go to assessments, and then choose the course that you want to see um, your learner's progress on. So we'll jump in here. This is, I think I chose types of gates and operators. Hit the answers report. Now what this will do is they'll show you all the questions and it'll be by person, by learner. You can sort these fields however you see fit. Uh, and you can see in here, uh, Zeke answered this question incorrectly. V-track rolling gates are most likely to be installed in Sunbelt states with minimal snow and ice. Well, Zeke, that might be a good conversation to have. Maybe Zeke's a salesperson. Hey, look, you know, we're in Denver. We get a lot of snow here. If we put a V-track rolling gate, you know, snow plow is going to rip it up. It's going to have problems when there's heavy snow. Uh, let's drill down on why that wouldn't be a good option. Okay, just as an example. So you can go in there and uh, see how they scored. So those are some of the improvements uh, that we've made. Great feedback. We'll continue to make these improvements. Um, we're humble in this regard. Uh, we want to make sure this is the best possible tool it can be for you. So uh, just to recap some of the things we talked about and the things that I, I, I think will help you get the most out of this investment, make it part of your onboarding and promotion process. Okay. Um, this is well over 12 hours of training. So it's a couple of days where they're going to be sitting down 
and going through this content. Okay, it can be a good uh, promotion process. Somebody wants to make that jump. I want to get out in the field. Maybe I've been, um, you know, working in the welding shop for a few years. I want to go do gate automation. All right, you know, here I'll buy this for you. You go through it, and and we'll take the next step. The gate installation curriculum. That's your best value. It's going to get you what you want. Okay. Uh, and we'll continue to build other curriculums. I'm super excited about uh, telephone entry and some others we're working on. Make sure you're tracking the, pro the progress. Make sure your admins are jumping in there and understanding where your learners are at. Review those uh, scores, have deeper conversations about things that they need to work on. Um, that's really gonna level them up, okay? And utilize that product specific training um, for continuing education. It doesn't have to be just for your certifications. It can be for just general uh, general ed. Uh, so maybe cruise through those uh, courses. And if they're products that you all are using, you can say to those learners, hey, I want you to go take this, um, this course. You know, most of them are about 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and there's no test on those, just, uh, just review and a certificate of completion. To sign up, you're going to go to our website, go to CPSGU online in the toolbar, and you'll see enrollment and add learners. So this space is used for uh, creating an account for CPSGU online. It's also a form used to add learners. So let's say you've already got an account, you've already got a couple learners in there, you want to add a few more, just go in there, fill out that form. Um, comes into it's automated, comes straight into us, and uh, we'll get those uh, learners added within 24 hours. Um, maybe not over the weekend. Maybe we do. We have at, done a lot over the weekend as well, but uh, we'll get those folks added in. There is a 30 day, uh, sorry, a three day, a three day free trial if you want to sign up, take this thing for a test spin. Uh, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had anybody cancel after the three days, but. Um, Go in there, take it for a test spin. If you got more questions, just reach out to us, learning at controlproducts.com or myself. Feel free to hit me up straight away. So, you know, there's some other aspects we could probably drill down on. Um, let's see, are there some questions coming in here? Is there somewhere that shows which customers might be enrolled for follow up conversations? Yeah, Greg, you're Greg. Greg works for CPSG. So, Greg, I follow up with you and let you know who's in there. And we have some. Uh, great customers in St. Louis area, the greater St. Louis area um, in the program now. Scott, is there somewhere that shows which states or municipalities require you to be certified to do access controls in their community or state? Great question and a hot topic in the industry. Um, currently, you really only have, um, I'd say, two states that are leaning into uh, certification heavily. The main one is Louisiana, uh, and they're requiring you to be certified to install gate operators. And the fire department is inspecting those installations. So I'm hearing some kind of varying degrees of success, but it's a great start. In Nevada, um, you know, for instance, UL 325 is law. There's still no certification requirement. And um, I hate to say it, but even though, you know, safety is part of the International Building Code, Residential Building Code, um, you know, Residential Fire Code, it's still not getting inspected. It's just not high enough in their uh, purview to be inspected. But there's some programs that trade organizations are working on um, to make that possible, which I think protects folks like you that are on this call that are professionals. Um, that are that care about gate safety. Um, and I think it'd be a, a real nice level up if everybody did need to be certified to some degree, because at that point, your quotes start looking a little bit more apples to apples. If you're a quality company, you go in there and quote all of the products that are needed to have a safe installation and your competitors not, you know, unfortunately, those quotes are looking a little bit different. So we've got uh, uh, some encouraging signs that there'll be some programs coming up. I rambled for 30 minutes. Uh, that's the time we allotted. I'll, I'll stay on here though. If somebody wants to ask more questions, if uh, you want me to show you the website, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, you're feel free to unmute your mics if you prefer to ask the question live. Um, I wanna serve you the best I can here.
So this is the site. Of course, I'm an admin, so I have a slightly different look here, but you know, you can go, these are my courses, what I'm already enrolled in. Uh, here's the course catalog. See all the classes and courses that we've got uh, in the program. Some additional resources, your transcript, so that'd be personal to you, and some help and support links. Another thing I might point out, I mentioned there's two types of gate operator training, really not two types, but you can buy it as a curriculum or you can buy the individual courses. Uh, once you, if you buy the curriculum and go through that curriculum, um, you won't, you'll no longer see the individual courses for sale, right? That's kind of a purpose built. So you don't accidentally buy that course that you really already own. And if you go into the gate operator curriculum, this is how it lays out. As I mentioned, you can jump around if you prefer, enroll in different courses, and then go back to earlier courses. Um, I had an email this morning from a potential new learner. Hey, I'm a busy person. Um, can I do this at my own pace? Absolutely. When you stop mid course, it will save your spot. Jump back in there and just resume, pick up where you left off. So you can kind of see each module is broken down into the content and a test. Jump in here and resume. I don't think I got very far in this one. Um, this is kind of how it's laid out. We'll do a, li a little bit of learning, or a little bit of reading rather. You see the different chapters within this module. Uh, and then you get this interactive section. So I'm gonna learn a little bit about vertical lift gates here. I'll watch, uh, let's see. Vertical lift gates are a single gate panel that moves straight up. A one minute video. Uh, by the way, you can speed them up. <laughs> you, you process uh, information uh, quicker than others. How many CEUs for the curriculum? That's a great question, David. I believe it's 12 CEUs. So that would cover you all in one file swoop if you went through that uh, curriculum. Scott, I got your message. It looks like you sent that one directly to me. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I, I honestly, I hope, um, I hope more uh, put effort into this type of stuff. I mean, this is really expensive though. It's really expensive to build. It's really ex time consuming. Um, so uh, unfortunately there's a pretty high barrier to entry, but I hope that other trade organizations start doing this as well. Uh, we understand this is the future of learning. Um, we need to have this self-paced stuff uh, available. The other thing I'll mention is you've always got access to us. You know, you've always got access to myself, um, Tim Nordstrom, Daniel Forte, the RFID team. They, um, several others have contributed to this. Uh, we'll get you in touch with the right folks. If there's something in here you want to see added, man, let me know. If there's something in here you don't think's right, let's have a chat about it. Um, the, is the cost per company or per individual? So every individual, because the learning is tracked specifically to them, will need a subscription. So if you just want CEUs, you can sign up today for 50 bucks a year, and get all the CEUs you want. And then the courses, if you want to buy them individually, it will have a fee. And again, the curriculum will have a fee. The curriculum will be per user. Everything's per user uh, because it needs to be tracked by for that person. So the certificate of completions has their name on it, has the hours spent and CEUs on it and the date, um, so on and so forth. And, you know, is $500 a lot of money? It depends how much you value education. Um, if you compare that to other types of learning, um, it's pretty cheap, right? It's, you know, if you're pulling somebody out of the field and putting them in a truck and, and driving them off to, uh, a location to learn. Um, you know, there's very few outlets to learn these disciplines. And, you know, maybe they've got their stuff together. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's sales oriented. Maybe it's not. This is this is meant for technicians. This is meant for people in the field, um, you know, doing the work. Where's the cost uh, per program listed? Um, I have a um, kind of syllabus. Um, it's a good question. I'm not sure I've got it nailed down on the website. Let me see if it's on the website. I'll send you a link in the post webinar notes. We'll send that out um, probably by the end of the day tomorrow. 
And Joe, I'll include the, that pricing in there for you. Okay. And if it's not on the website, I'll get it posted up there. All right. Um, I am going to wrap it up here. Th again, thanks so much for joining. If you got questions, you can reach out to me, learning at controlproducts.com. Again, go to our website. Uh, you can learn a little bit more uh, just by clicking on this CPSGU online. Uh, read up on it. The little sizzle videos there. Uh, again, our contact information's at the bottom. Uh, happy to answer questions and uh, get you guys rocking and rolling. So thanks again for joining. I'll send out those post-webinar notes uh, here by end of day tomorrow. Cheers.